What is up YouTube? What is up low heat fans? Have a slightly different video for you today. I don't have shoes in front of me, but this kind of relates to the shoe game. Very similar concept. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, finally doing it. So appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate any returning uh, viewers and any new ones. Uh, check out my channel. Would appreciate a subscribe. It only takes a thumb click, a pointer finger, what have you while you're eating your lean pocket. So. I'll start it off like I do with most of my videos with a, an opening and unboxing of sorts. Opening this pack, I've been waiting to open it until I made this video. Uh, and this is the inspiration for this video. So recently, Dennis Rodman uh, partnered with V-Loan to come out with uh, a bunch of apparel. And some of the apparel is basically his, uh, similar to the designs of his iconic, iconic Nike t-shirts that on the vintage market go for a ton. Uh, they're very pricey. There's the one with the, there's a couple different ones of them, but the, the most famous one's the one with the large back print and the small front Nike hit uh, right below the, the neckline. And so I think, I think it's a good move for him, for him, you know, capitalizing on his image. He doesn't see a penny of those aftermarket sales all these years later. Never saw probably too much, you know, back in the day from Nike itself. So partnering with a legitimate, you know, apparel fashion company putting out a product i think it probably sold well it was up for like it's open for like three days um i think a uh, smart move on his part from a business standpoint but it got me thinking you know anyone with here's a good look at it i'll get my initial thoughts on it anyone with one of those vintage pairs you know it, i'm sure they wince a little bit if they they had a bunch or, they, or if anyone's shelled out 500 bucks for a Rodman t-shirt, uh, you know, because then there is a similar product on the market. Not the same. I'm going to get into that. It's not the same, but it is similar. There's a, a proxy, a facsimile to it out on the market, which in essence makes yours less scarce. If it makes it less scarce, potentially less valuable. And whether you look at money or not, some people that matters a lot, but it's, for some it's just having a unique product and it's just slightly less unique. Lots of arguments though from all the different sides, I'm sure. Some people are like, oh, well you shouldn't be spending 500 bucks on a t-shirt. I don't want to shame anyone for the way they spend their money. Uh, maybe there's, yes, yeah, you could, that's what the point of this video is. Spend your money smartly. I, th I think no one's against that, right? That I think everyone can agree on. Um, but there's others that will say also too that something like this shouldn't, shouldn't impact the value of a, a vintage Rodman Nike t-shirt at all, which I also agree with too, to a degree. They're, they're different. They're similar, but different. Uh, or you might argue not even similar at all. This is V-Loan, that's Nike. The, the, the fade and the wear on the other one set this apart. But um, So here's this t-shirt. Uh, let's talk about this really quick before I get into all the nuances and subtleties that I'm going to talk about in the video. The main point of this video is well, when to spend money on vintage and how much. Vintage t-shirts specifically. Uh, sorry, the, click, the title might be a little clickbaity. Uh, but that's just the world we live in now with YouTube trying to get attention and things. But I'm going to try to stick to the, the point of that to a degree uh, is is I really don't, again, I'm not sh uh, reprimanding, shaming, or, or saying you're stupid if you spend a ton of money on a t-shirt. If you spend $800, just make sure you're making an informed decision. That's all That's all. That's all. all I'm putting out there. And whenever you buy a vintage t-shirt, make sure you're you're spending your money wisely and with a point and a purpose and rationale behind it. That's all we're, that's all we're dealing with here. So that, so, you know, anyone in the comments, you might be more knowledgeable than me about the vintage t-shirt market history, all that. Feel free to add, educate anyone watching this video, educate me all good, but we're going to keep it, try to keep it civil. Uh, every, it's all just, it's all just fun, fun, fun fashion. Um, so this is heavy, heavy screen printed, Decent quality tee. I don't buy a ton of V-Loan stuff. It, they don't have the typical uh, V-Loan cutout tag here. So, I don't know. They 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 skimped on that. It's just a screen printed um, tag. Uh, the quality. These these were a little these were a little pricey. You know, V-Loan's not cheap. These definitely, I think, this definitely ran over $50. Uh, maybe even $70. I, I forget right now. It's been a minute since uh, I ordered this, but I think it's dope. I like it. Again, it's very similar to the Nike uh, graphic with his, you know, the leopard dyed hair. 
does have the v, v loan branding on his forehead uh, but happy that Dennis the worm can make a little money off of his image uh, I, I wasn't about to, so this is the main problem as I was speaking to, I wasn't about to spend 500 bucks on a vintage tee, got this at essentially a discount. Again, not the same, but it is an option. So that's something to keep aware of with high price vintage things. If the person's still alive, they can collab and, uh, you know, put out things, uh, of their likeness, something to keep in mind. We're going to see that, um, elsewhere in my pile. I'm going to go through a bunch of shirts here and tell you my thoughts on, on, on how to, how to parse these, what's, what's smart about them, what might not be smart. I'm going to start off with, well, first off, let me, let me know your thoughts on the Dennis Rodman V-Loan t-shirt. That's the first thing. Keep watching. I have lots of different categories. I sorted these kind of by category of, of like sports. I'm going to start with sports because everyone's here kind of like for shoes. Start with sports, move into pop culture and stuff. And then I'm going to end with some things that I think are like safe bets. As we, as we move along, I'll too, I'll have some safe bets and some risky stuff. So mainly going by category um, here. So I'm going to try, I have a ton of t-shirts to go through, so I'll try to keep it quick. Not, not, not ramble too long. This is one of, I think my riskiest, um, irrational, maybe air quotes dumb again i don't want to label anyone dumb here so that you bought or you should feel bad so all i'm saying here is this is a true you know 19 uh early 90s i think early 90s maybe late 80s uh nike air jordan shirt i bought it with the rationale of you very rarely find the nike and the jordan symbol together but that was the rationale then but it actually is a little bit more common than I thought, and they even do it now, uh, aside from the shoes. Um, you know, when they do true retros, they put the Nike Air on the back. You have the Jordan symbol, you have the Nike box, of course, they come in. But um, I was just thinking that they don't typically put the two brands together side by side, and that this, I paid, I think, 100 for this, or close to 100 for this, single stitched, as you can see. And um, they're just, it is a little bit more common. Plus, they do stuff like this currently, uh, anyone who might defend my purchase, you, you know, this has a nice fade on it. You can clearly tell it's vintage from single stitch and stuff, but just like shoes, 90% of the people out there don't appreciate that. Um, they're not going to notice that it's single stitch. Uh, a lot of things come pre-worn like this. Like I have a union Jordan shirt with cracked, comes with a cracked graphic already. I think people, uh, instinct, uh, unknowingly subliminally, like uh, a vintage fade on some stuff you know they might not pinpoint it but uh it's usually a nice shirt to people's on people's eyes so you're not going to get that with a brand new shirt but depending on the quality you can wear it in and make it look vintage so, so shirts today are a little crappier material they're thinner so that it doesn't sometimes get this nice uh vintage fade to it they they wear thin really quick and they don't have this this uh you can can't see the the micro threads uh come to the surface like that so anyways, I think this is a risky, uh, risky purchase. Any old vintage Nike, they, they know the market's hot. Every brand knows vintage stuff is hot. Retro stuff is hot. So they've been going through the cat. Any clothing apparel brand, non-apparel brand has been going through catalog of stuff, looking at their old logos, looking at their archives, and re-coming out with stuff like this. So any expensive Nike stuff, buyer beware. I would look um, if they're doing anything similar or have done anything similar. Again, it's not the same. I'm not saying they're the same, but if you're going to spend a hundred dollars and someone can get something that looks pretty close for 30 bucks, uh, you know, who are you impressing by, by spending $70 more? So just be careful there. Um, this is something I think is safer. You got an obscure player, Dan Marley, uh, no team branding. And I got this because it said got him, which is obviously the, the ubiquitous with, uh, the sneakers app. So I thought this was a dope t-shirt. Uh, I forget, I probably saw this on some Instagram story and then looked it up on eBay. Uh, I think this is unique. I don't know how many Dan Marley shirts are coming out in the future. I don't know how many are gonna have this exact pose logo um, with this phrase. Like again, I think th you'll find the running theme of this video is look for unique. This was made by Dan Marley's like brand, nine brand. 
Hmm, that's probably not in existence right now. So this is, unless it's bootlegged, and then even if it's bootlegged, you're probably not getting a double, double collar like that. So lots of unique features to this. Lots of unique features to this that is very unlikely to be remade and hold its value. That being said, this wasn't that expensive. So it, we're kind of going against the grain of like when to spend a lot of money. But, um, you know, the, the demand isn't high for this shirt, but at the same time, low risk, low risk of duplication. So that I think is a decent buy. This Cal Ripken, you know, he could do a deal with the Orioles. They could make remake merch, but two things on this. Embroidery, not done very often anymore. This is a dead stock shirt too. It's still got the tag. Not done very often. It's expensive. It's itchy on the inside. You got that patch. No one likes it that much. That's probably why they stopped doing it. Also made by Nutmeg Mills. This company has been absorbed by another company uh, in the 2000s. And um, the, whoever owns the rights to Nutmeg Mills could sell off the brand. That was the goal back then. Could sell it off. Um, and there could be some nutmeg stuff. This is from 1992. But uh, highly unlikely you'd get this exact shirt with this embroidery, nutmeg mills. So there's there's you hitting an intersection of a brand, the manufacturer brand being out of out of uh, business and a style that's not often duplicated anymore with a retired player. So there's you got three things going for it that make this a safe bet. Again, demand isn't super high on this. Price isn't super high on this. So again, we're, we're looking for high priced. The goal is to find high priced t-shirts that are a safe buy. If you wanted to spend 200 bucks, 200 plus, it'd be like more on the safe side. So, so far, we're still trying to figure out that sweet spot. Here's another example of something that I think is relatively safe. No, again, not a lot of demand. I think these are dope. I hope, you know, if a million people watch this, and uh, Kimbo Slice t-shirts go through the tap out Kimbo Slice t-shirts go through the roof. I, I guess that's good problems to have. But I, this is a, a secret, a hidden gem to me. You could get these for pretty cheap. Uh, and I have a couple of them. And I think these are a hidden gem. Uh, again, if these go up in price because of this video, that's good problems to have. But uh, you have a deceased RIP Kimbo Slice. He was, he was amazing. Loved Kimbo Slice. Um, he's a good dude too. If you ever saw interviews with him, uh, and uh, backyard fight, you know, I'm gonna ramble. Anyways, Kimbo Slice is dope. Tap out, not a popular brand. It's like you know, Ed Hardy. It's like Affliction. It's of that day, but this has that unique, like it's got a you know, dope person on it, and this is in that in that tone of irony, but. This guy legitimizes it, right? If this was any old tap out t-shirt, not cool or affliction or head at Hardy. He makes this this cool, what is kind of an ironic shirt, less unironic and turns it cool. Uh tap out has been absorbed, I think 50% of it's owned by the WWE. Haven't heard or seen it in like the last seven years. This is a safe bet. Again, demand's not high, these aren't expensive, so we're not quite to what I'm speaking to in the video. But this is like something that, you know, you should feel fairly comfortable isn't going to, unless people boot like this, people could boot like this. Um, these are safe bets. I love these t-shirts. At first, you know, you see someone wearing a tap out t-shirt, you're scratching your head like, oh, okay, don't know about this dude. Uh, and then it's like, oh, it's a Kimbo Slice t-shirt. That's kind of fire. At least that's, that's me. Um, so I think that's like something that's safe. Um, again, when I'm saying safe, I mean, I'm like in my budget range, I'm spending like most I'm spending is a hundred bucks. Uh, but that's expensive. $50, $50 can be expensive. You know, I, I'm, I subscribe, I believe in the Macklemore line, you know, $50 for a t-shirt. That's some bullshit. Same time. I don't, I don't adhere to it. So, um, so mainly we're talking about super expensive tees as as far as like the the theme of the video but when i say things are safe i i'm saying it for like you know 60 and under it's safe because uh even that can be kind of expensive here um here this this is safe because it's just there's no demand like this is a dead stock old stock uh wisconsin badgers rose bowl shirt from 94 that's just not being remade there's no desire on the the Badgers, well, maybe the Badgers, see, that that's where the problem is. But I think they probably need special license to have this Rose Bowl logo. Um, very 
low chance of this being reprinted other than bootlegs. Easy to bootleg though. Um, but yeah, just no one, no one's doing that. No one's capitalizing on this. There's no demand for this. Safe buy. Uh, got that for a good price on eBay. Uh, continuing with sports, this shirt. Again, bootlegs are always possible, but as far as someone actually manufacturing this, like Energizer, maybe if they sponsor the World Cup when it comes to the U.S., might do another shirt, might do similar, but you're not going to get a 94 probably. Um, you Just too many things in this shirt you're just not going to get unless someone's bootlegging these. And this is a big, gra expensive graphic to bootleg. Like, So you have... You have a, a, a random sponsor, not an apparel company. Energizer doesn't have any skin in the game to be making t-shirts really on the regular. You have an old event uh, with a U.S. World Cup, a very unique event. Old date, like this, I think, safe safe to buy. Here, here you think like, oh, this is, uh, this could be reprinted or something like it. Well... Again, we got Nutmeg Mills, defunct company. Again, we got embroidery, not as common. That's an expensive patch nowadays. People, companies are just too cheap to do that stuff. Otherwise, they have to charge an arm and a leg, and then the consumers don't buy it. But the real key thing here about why this is safe, the Brewers are in the American League uh, in this in this T-shirt. They're no longer in the American League. So if the Brewers ever did a T-shirt, even a throwback, they're probably not doing American League Eastern Division stuff. Uh, I mean, may maybe they do throwbacks with old players. Maybe they do the, the one World Series they went to. But they're probably not doing um, Eastern Division American League t-shirts. Again, safe. Now, where you got to be careful is is retro stuff like this. Everyone, it, Everything is cool again. So another brand like, like Nutmeg Mills, Mitchell Ness. I don't know how many Sports Illustrated t-shirts out there, but these are brand new. These just dropped um, a little bit ago. You got David Robinson, the Admiral, and you got Anthony Hardaway, um, Penny Hardaway on the Magic Sports Illustrated cover T-shirts from Michelle and S. That you know that is like something buyer beware. If if there ever was an old Sports Illustrated cover T-shirts uh, with these guys on it, that here they just real they just this is an official licensed product. Birthday presents for my brother. He, watched, he doesn't really watch my videos. He, he turns them on in the background and doesn't watch, so hopefully he doesn't see this because his birthday's not for a bit. Keeping it cruising, keeping it cruising. This video is already really long. Okay. Um, Adidas equipment. I bought this on eBay a while ago. Uh, really happy with the purchase. Didn't spend too much money on it, so that's great. It's got the side patch. And then it, they came out with them again. Again, every company, apparel company, knows this, this crap is hot. So they reissued basically their old thing. Similar tag, not quite as long. I went over this actually in another Adidas video, but so I'll keep this short, but basically the same t-shirt. So I don't know which video I did these in. I'll try to link it a little above if you want me to go over each detail, but basically came out with this stuff. This half zip, I remember this in the day, a soccer coach had this, I had to have it now. So if you paid for this a, a ton, over a hundred plus on eBay, and then you can just get the new thing just like that. In this case, I would prefer the new thing almost. Any old worn out one, um, you know, I'd just prefer a new jacket actually. Sweatshirt may be slightly different. You maybe can tell it's vintage, but I think they did come out with equi Adidas equipment sweatshirts. The vintage ones are a little bit more vintagey and there's some value there. But again, if you're paying 200 bucks and then they just drop this for like 70, I don't know, I'd feel bad. Uh, that's just me, maybe you wouldn't. Uh, moving on to uh, the pop culture joints. Uh, movies, Jurassic Park tees, vintage ones, always very expensive. This one I got for a decent price because it was a little bit damaged and faded. So like in key instances, this would be a typical like buyer beware, be very careful. But I, if you don't pay a ton, obviously it's fine. Uh, and also this is hard to duplicate, uh, this type of shirt. I think these teeth were glow in the dark at one time. Uh, obviously, you got the very vintage wear to it with holes right by the teeth. I think that is a hanger. That's my own doing, I think. Be careful with old t-shirts. They're delicate. Um, like, you're not going to get this look on a t-shirt uh, for sure. It's like partially thrashed uh, under the armpits. So, 
I won't spend a ton on Jurassic Park t-shirts. They can, uh, like, you know, retro air quotes these, but like, if you don't pay a ton, then you're safe, right? Then that's not what we're talking about. Uh, and then you just get the benefits of it looking vintage. This is a tricky one, the Batman. This is from Batman 2, I think, Batman Returns, back in the 90s, I think. Yeah, 1995, this is from the second Batman with Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Michelle Pfeiffer. This, you know, Warner Brothers, if they want to reissue, I think it's a little tricky with the older movies. Always, They always want to promote the newer thing. They always want to look to the future. Movie studios tend to not do old, um, old movie specific things. Uh, so that being said, someone could get the license from Warner Brothers potentially. So, uh, again, I didn't pay a ton for this, but I would, you know, it's always scary seeing those Catwoman t-shirts and Danny DeVito Penguin t-shirts. Those go for a ton of money. Yeah. I don't know what the legal and licensed jujitsu would be needed to do one similar to those. But, um, and again, you can always tell a vintage t-shirt for the most part. Well, if you're if you're in the game, you can. But again, to eighty five percent, ninety percent of the public, they're they're not going to care. It's only the people watching this channel that are going to care. Who I know we do try to impress each other, but you know, not you know, it's not all about just impressing other hype beasts. Uh, you don't want to break the bank that way. So you got other money to spend, uh, you know, things on, go on trips, etc. This is not single stitch. This is a key example. This is a key example why maybe to be careful for something like this i don't know if the the move who, whoever owns the rights to this to army of darkness great movie by the way don't just buy the t-shirt actually watch the movies um whoever owns the rights to this universal maybe uh might own the rights i'm pretty sure did not authorize this t-shirt you don't have any trademark on here well you have the tm here but you don't have any copyright information on this t-shirt it's not single stitched it's double stitched you got a newer gildan uh tag so again things become popular people just start bootlegging them in 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 thailand so be careful with i even i know this would still go even a bootleg that's well nicely worn not too worn but a little worn like i could probably sell this for an okay amount oh here's here i spoke too soon it does have some stuff 1993 orion pictures but this is definitely um not from 1993 this shirt this is definitely a newer shirt, newer than 1993. So this is this is a bootleg. I don't know who owns Orion Pictures or who owns the rights to this film, but that's what you got to be aware of um, when you're spending an arm and a leg. Bootlegs. And this is a good looking bootleg. That being said, even bootlegs, you know, can go for an okay amount of money, but you don't want to pay an arm and a leg when people can just make your your thing uh, essentially. Again, it's just not as unique, right? This is like cool shirt and all, but like lots of people have this or, or a decent amount of people have this shirt. So it's just less scarce, less unique. You get less recognition. If I wear this to anywhere in LA, to any hype beast event, people just, you know, nod. If you like the movie, I get more recognition from this of people who actually just like the movie, right? Like it, it, no hype beast or, or vintage, vintage heads are giving me nods of approval because A, it's not vintage and B, they've seen this a million times. I only get nods of approval from people who like Sam Raimi and uh, uh, Army of Darkness and Evil Dead. Uh, so, bootleg of an old movie, and then here's an officially licensed product of an old movie. Jason, Friday the 13th t-shirts with Jason go for a lot of money, a lot of money. Bait just did an officially licensed collab with the, the, with the Jason franchise. The Friday the 13th franchise. So that's something you got to be aware of. Normally I'd say like who's going to, like I was just saying, with the rights to older movies, the Batman movie, uh, Army of Darkness. Well here, Bait was just able to work it out with um, the Friday the 13th franchise. Did big full screen graphics like this. Full shirt graphics, front and back. That's normally the problem, right? With, with newer stuff. The, the vintage stuff is better because they have the big graphics and like newer stuff doesn't pay for that money on newer graphics. But here, bait, and you'll see some more examples coming up. Bait paid for it, paid. That's why these are a little bit more expensive. Full shirt graphic. Now the weight of this tee is not very, it's pretty thin. But, um, you know, officially licensed. 
Now, in the actual vintage Friday the 13th shirt, I'm sure it's fire. I've seen them. They are fire. And again, hype beasts can tell they're actually vintage. But for most people, if I walked into the office, I don't go to the office anymore, but if I walked into the office, this would get just as much approval, if not more, from just common people. Here's another one. I'm not going to open this. Again, I got this for my brother. But it's Friday the 13th movie poster tee. Um, you just, there's so many, uh, I'll pause here to, before I forget it. There's just so many companies doing collabs with old school stuff. I just bought a Pleasures t Outcast t-shirt. Again, not a big graphic. Bates doing big graphics, which is dope. Pleasures is just a smaller graphic of the Outcast duo. But you got like... Like, if you just walk by Journeys, walk by Journeys on their wall. They have, like, Ice Cube, Aaliyah, all these t-shirts uh, that are basically reprints. Urban Outfitters that are reprints of of classic vintage shirts. Uh, way less quality. They don't look, don't have the vintage wear. But, again, it just makes the vintage one a little less unique. If you can just get a $30 t-shirt at Journeys at Urban Outfitters. Uh, Shoe Palace also does collapse. Uh, not as high a quality as bait, but they're also a little cheaper. Um, but that's, again, I think, like, I'm glad they are doing collabs because then you can, you know, you can have a cool shirt that's not um, $5,000. Um, Supreme has been doing some obscure collaborations, uh, speaking of movies. And I think this is where it's also okay because not only the, you know, bait as itself isn't like really bringing much to the table as far as like, ooh, it's a bait shirt, but Supreme, the brand, uh, collabing. Uh, I love the Turtles. I, I haven't seen many. This is the original Turtles movie. I haven't seen many original Turtles movies t-shirts. So the opportunity where you can actually find the original uh, movie on a shirt, A, great, and B, uh, officially licensed collab with Supreme, great. Uh, I think that's fine to spend a little bit of money on. Aeon Flux, again, if you had the vintage tees, better. But Supreme just did a drop of these. Um, smaller graphics, though. Uh, this is pretty big. But, uh, you know, it just makes those Aeon Flux. Here's here's an example of an obscure movie, and you wouldn't think there would ever be any many shirts made of it ever again. You would think you'd be in the clear buying an Aeon Flux vintage tee. Well, now then Supreme just did it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, magic stuff, sometimes super expensive vintage. And here, Dumb Good, company Dumb Good, they make really cool t-shirts. Check them out. But uh, this is a key example. Dumb Good makes really cool t-shirts. But it's all officially licensed and uh, make dope t-shirts and really huge graphic here of the Black Lotus, the, the famous iconic Magic Card Black Lotus. Um, this is just 40 bucks. Uh, now, if there was an actual Black Lotus t-shirt like this, vintage t-shirt like this, probably going to be 500 bucks, 400 bucks. If I was rich, I would buy it for sure. I'd rather have that than this, but, um, why spend that much when you can just spend 40 bucks on this? Uh, if you, if, you know, if money, if you're a regular person and money's normal to you. All right, let's get into some things where it's safe and not safe. Looney Tunes. You'd think they would they would be making a ton of this stuff, you know. Their vintage shirts go for a ton of money. Uh, Space Jam was just released. Thing with Looney Tunes, where it's sometimes safe to buy a shirt, a Looney Tunes shirt for a lot of money, is a lot of their cartoons are a little dated and and politically incorrect. They got to be very careful bringing that that uh, line back in twenty twenty two. I think some things are fine, you know, but other things, you know, you get, you know, it's expensive to bring back a whole cartoon series and you don't want to do that and then have people, a lot of bad PR. So this I paid a decent amount of money for, not crazy because the collar has been shredded, um, but I think this is like, Looney Tunes is right on the border of being safe and unsafe. Tiny Tunes. This has a greater chance of coming back because it's not actually Looney Tunes, the old characters. It's adjacent and more kid-friendly. Uh, this, you know, on, on market has wide fluctuation. The demand's not high for these, but this is super rare. And, uh, you know, double-sided, double-sided. 
But I could see if anything being brought back, it would be Tiny Toon Adventures. So careful paying an arm and a leg for Tiny Toon Adventures stuff. Also that, you know, Warner Brothers still owns the brand. They can still license that product if they wanted to. So I'm surprised they haven't actually. Ren and Stimpy. This is kind of like the Army of Darkness shirt. Iconic vintage t-shirt. Uh, why I th This is the rare example where I think it might be sort of safe to buy something like this. This is my first actually uh, little fact for the channel for loyal viewers who are still watching. This is a long video. Um, this is my first vintage find at a Goodwill. When I started getting into uh, vintage thrifting, this was my first good find. Like the first time I went to Goodwill, I found this on the racks, right as vintage was blowing up like four, three and a half, four years ago. Somehow found this my first go. Anyways, Ren and Stimpy, along the lines of Looney Tunes, but even further off off the mainstream, would be hard to be brought back. If it's brought back, it would come to something, uh, you know, HBO, HBO Max, maybe, you know, uh, FX, something obscure, uh, would not be brought back to Nicktoons or Nickelodeon. So this is where one of those rare instances where I think it's okay to pay a little bit for a vintage shirt. Uh, if they come back, they're going to be different. And um, I don't know. It's just hard to... I think you can watch these somewhere. Who has the rights to these these shows? I don't know where you can watch them right now. But just bringing back their apparel with Nickelodeon on it, I don't know. I think I think that's somewhat safe. I would never pay 500 bucks for it. Um, Xena, old TV shows. So we got Ren and Stimpy, we're talking cartoons, now moving to old TV shows. Uh, who owns this? Universal Studios. I think they could totally reprint this shirt if they wanted to. So Xena shirts aren't worth a ton, but um, if they start creeping up in price, I'd be very, very careful. Also very bootleggable. Uh, very careful spending an arm and a leg on Xena shirts. There's also a million out there. Uh, yeah. This, however, this I do think is a little more safe. Now, obviously, they can make Andy Griffith shirts again, but uh, I don't think you're going to get a, a ton of all over print Andy Griffith or any of these old shows. All over prints to begin with are just expensive for companies to do nowadays, and they just don't tend to do them. So. That is uh, a possibility, is all over print t-shirts like this, old. Uh, they could redo the Andy Griffith Show stuff, but probably not in this form. This is a safe, safe-ish buy. Now, this is a, is a mix. This, super bootleggable, but also the rights for Battle Royale, the manga, the anime, the OG, just, I think they're all over the place. Uh, so... No one's officially licensing this anytime soon, but uh, very bootleggable. So this is this is that cross section. Um, d okay, here we go. Um, Jessica Rabbit. This is, I think, a safe-ish buy. These are very rare. Uh, I got this from shout out to Meg Park. Got this at Meg Park for a steal a few years ago. Um, Disney uh, is is family friendly, veering away from anything overtly sexual and uh non-pc uh i'm not bad i'm just drawn that way love it uh so this i think somewhat safe obviously you can bootleg it but you're not getting the actual tag um this one i think is somewhat safe something like this uh, it's just going to be very hard pressed for disney to reprint shirts like this anymore in 2022 not making judgment calls either way so like all the people that say yeah that's stupid that's woke corporate culture you know they got these there's reasons i'm not going to get into it i've got to get through this video um uh, and anyone who's saying yeah they should be doing that like you can chill too everyone can chill but uh we can appreciate that this is rare i think this is somewhat safe buy and these are expensive so somewhat stamp of approval also they're not doing anything like this this is where we get into what well you know well fancy pants what is safe to buy anything unique where they're not going to do it again Walt Disney World Showcase of Dolls 1991. They're not reprinting this shirt. They're not. No one's reprinting this shirt ever. Uh, you got a creepy. Uh, who is that? Uh, from Peter Pan. Wendy. Creepy Wendy doll and Minnie Mouse. Uh, 19, uh, a specific date. Uh, no one is doing that. The old Disney. Old school Disney logo. 
this is this is a safe buy if this was expensive. Again, I think I got this from the Mag Park, I think, for a steal. Shout out to them. Uh, anything unique is what you're looking for. This, surprisingly, uh, moving into video games now. Uh, I'll stop. I'll shut up about the bootlegging. I'm sure you guys are sick of it, but that is something you got to be aware of. It's so like something like this getting bootlegged. Last, I'll try not to say it too much anymore. But um, the Z Nintendo and the Zelda company, you know, is not going to make old video game T-shirts. They have so many Zelda franchises. They're always looking towards the future and the newest one. They're not making the Twilight Princess uh, game now. Interesting point would be like, what if Urban Outfitters approaches them and they want to do this T-shirt? That's a possibility. I don't know. I don't know what the possibility is like that. And if Nintendo would say yes, they would do. I feel like they would do this Zelda picture, and they would take out Twilight Princess. They would say yes, but they wouldn't do this exact thing. They'd do this Zelda pose, and it, it would be um, different. Um. Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, old PC game, old PC shirts. I don't know if these are... Yeah, these came out during that time. One of them has a GameStop thing on the, on the sleeve. Um, these, again, Schoolgirl, Vampire. Uh, in this day and age, you're just not going to get a ton of t-shirts like that. You do get some, you know, they, hookups, Jeremy Klein, they still make shirts like this. Um, I don't know how much you'd want to wear these out in public at this time. Uh, I think they're dope, but... Uh, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, I don't know. I don't know the demand on this, uh, but these I think are fairly safe. These aren't that expensive though either because the game's not super popular. So unique. Also unique, Guild Wars. I don't think they're making remaking this anytime soon. This is not, this is kind of a defunct game to a degree. Uh, and this is the old, the OG Guild Wars, I think, or expansion. Someone help me out, but this is their promo shirt. This is basically dead stock uh unique video game uh no demand though so in this in the clear but again you're not paying a ton for that here's something expensive where i think it's kind of in the clear other than remakes uh unauthorized remakes you got two brands here you got star wars which is owned by disney now and soul caliber i highly doubt anyone is going to authorize this being remade again in an official capacity uh unless this exact image for sure not so this something that i feel is safe safe this has got this shirt has gone up a ton in price uh lately uh i don't think they're going to be remaking this anytime soon i mean again now if i think this is slightly more risky than this shirt i'll put it that way this has multiple layers of difficulty to get remade in any official capacity. This is just the brand's IP. Someone like, um, again, Urban Outfitters or whatever, they could do like Approach Soul Calibur, put this on the front rather than the back graphic, uh, or Bandai Namco. So this, I think, is slightly riskier, but somewhat safe. Now this Dawn reprint, Michael Liz, uh, Linsner, um, sort of safe, but I'd be careful. I'd be careful. What I think is a smarter buy, less desirable because it's more specific. The the smarter buy is is something from a an actual event. I think this is from yes, this is from this event. Uh, this is a charitable event helping comic book creators in need. Uh, hero. Uh, so something like this, you're not going to get this exactly again that cooler more expensive this shirt less likely to be reprinted though all right we're at the end here i'm gonna try to wrap this up but what is safe what is safe fancy pants like i said obscure here's some examples of things that i think are safe also not that expensive but here's where things you'll always have unique you don't have to worry about um people running around with something similar uh Microsoft Windows, old school Windows, baseball jersey. I forget where I found that. Uh, that is definitely unique. This this promotional Cindy Crawford World Tour 91 JH Collectibles World Tour t-shirt. You're not finding that anywhere. You're not getting that reprinted. Didn't cost me a ton. It doesn't have her face on it. But anything obscure, you're safe. Got this 
in where did I always get this in Belgium? Um, yeah, I got this in Belgium uh, at some random thrift store, but just some like local teams, beer league, soccer team, Soul Master, crazy jerseys. This was never worn. I got this at Buffalo Exchange for 18 bucks. Men's Senior Baseball League, MSBL, 1995 national member. Like that's a dope graphic, love that graphic. Like that's not being remade. Also didn't spend a ton of money, but no one's ever gonna. So just unique stuff. Keep your eye out for unique things. Now men over 30 don't have to go to a bar to strike out. Local here, men's senior baseball. That's great. That's a fire t-shirt, can't wait to wear that. Here's something that's risky. I will end on something that's more safe. Harley Davidson, so much t-shirts out there. This is an all over print thing. I love this t-shirt, cost me like 100 bucks. Expensive, think it was worth it. It's got that perfect fade on it, perfect wear. But, you know, Harley Davidson could easily, easily do something similar to this. And if you bought it new, wouldn't look, have this fade. But with time, if the material is anywhat similar, it would look like this. And I spent a hundred bucks on this. This, I think, is more, more safe. I think Travis Scott wore this at one point, this type of vintage shirt. Definitely bootleggable, but like double-sided eagle print, cracked. Like who who who's doing that nowadays? No one no one's gonna have a graphic like that looks this good, that looks this good both sides. Uh, no one's licensing that like this. Less money, less money than this Harley Davidson one. Arguably more cool, and a safer, more unique shirt. Uh, potentially in the future because this has a less chance in my opinion now now granted this isn't a big brand like anyone could do this so i i don't know i take it back because no one can do this this without getting sued or they have to do it on the low this you know who knows the, the owner of this artwork but this style of printing i think that's pretty safe and it was less expensive than this one so there's the video let me know your thoughts those are all the examples in short be careful with big Pink Floyd t-shirt purchases, expensive band uh, shirts, corn, Green Day, Red Hot Chili Peppers, expensive movie t-shirts, rap t-shirts, just because, you know, journeys can do them for a buck. Um, and they aren't the same, not as cool, not arguing that, but $600 versus 30, I'm choosing 30 every time and most people won't, don't care that much, so that's my video appreciate all you who watched hey if there's anyone who watched this entire video drop me a comment right now uh give me an eagle caw give me an eagle caw in the caw ca -caw in the comments right if you've watched this entire video shout outs to you oh shit i i i stopped the video and i realized i had one quick more stack so aside from the rodman thing that got me thinking about this about this video concept um was this shirt in particular uh so i got this is going up in price this one this frank miller dark knight t-shirt is going up in price uh you know i got it for under 50 but i think it's creeping up into the 50s as comic book t-shirts and marvel t-shirts go up the, the the high high prices on these on those marvel t-shirts have come down a little bit people have come back to earth on some of that as i'll show you maybe why um, in a, just a second here, but this one has been creeping up because it's just undervalued. I think, you know what though? Boom. You, you got very similar shirt officially licensed by <clears throat> the hundreds, hundreds collab, um, does hundreds and bait do great all over graphic prints or not all over graphics, but large graphic prints on their shirts, heavyweight t-shirt. So be very careful. I saw there's some a shirt very similar to this, uh, um, a vintage one, and then this is the this is the hundreds one, heavyweight shirt, all over print graphic. I got like twenty watchers, um, twenty watchers on this t-shirt on eBay, and this is the new one, not the vintage one. Um, this is the new hundreds one. So just be careful with that stuff. Uh, yeah, I feel like some of the high-end uh, Marvel shirts have come down. The market's come down. But there's a lot of stuff that's undervalued, especially on the DC side, because Marvel's so popular. 
Um, may, why has some of that stuff finally come down to the all-time highs? Because just people can't spend $300 per t-shirt. Uh, and also when bait is doing things uh, like this. Uh, look at this great, great Todd McFarlane comic book cover graphic on this shirt from bait. Officially licensed. Again, why would you spend $400 when you can get something very close to this? Huge graphic print, good quality shirt from Bait. Uh, I would just be hard pressed. Now, you know, I was as I was saying in, previously, you know, you got Urban Outfitters and, and Journeys doing crappy, crappy uh, bootlegs, but or officially licensed ones. But you got companies like Bait and Hundreds doing high, higher quality prints, higher quality T-shirts. You also have brands like. Um, uh, Pleasures and and Kith doing cool collabs with like Notorious B.I.G.'s Estate, um, Star Wars, Rocky. Um, it's something you got to be careful of. Just because someone's dead doesn't mean their family, whoever owns the right to their image and likeness, doesn't want to make money. So I was mentioning Kimbo Slice before, but like, you know, Biggie, uh, Anna Nicole Smith with Supreme. All those, anyone, just because they're dead doesn't mean their estate isn't going to want to make uh, money off their off their name so uh, be careful with that assuming that now I have an example of three different Wonder Woman's t-shirts and I think one is safer than the other or two are safer than the other let me know in the comments if you know which one or which two are safer if you guess these two you're right this one is done by this illustrated by Jim Lee drawn by Jim Lee uh, these two are, are uh, drawn by um, Michael Turner, uh, who passed away in 2008. So these, I like Jim Lee's still around. He's, you know, VP of everything at, at DC. If they wanted to relicense, reissue this shirt, probably could. Uh, this, I feel like it's harder to do. Um, I don't know what the deal is with your artwork when you're with a, a company and and the work you did they probably do own the rights to these images that michael turner did for them but you know it might be bad looks uh using his illustrations to profit from without it going to charity or, or approval from the family uh his family and his estate uh might be hard to do you know they might want to avoid doing that so shirts done artwork done by deceased people not carte blanche um is safe you know there's there's you know Pablo Picasso, people, Dali, you know, people own the rights to their artwork and can do things with it. But just these are the things to consider when you're shelling out hard earned dollars. I just think these are safer. Uh, got these all for a decent price. And I think the floor on the DC stuff is coming up because Marvel stuff is so expensive. I think people like myself, found, I mean, I'm a DC fan to begin with, found DC stuff way cheaper. I was like, why is this so cheap when all the Marvel stuff is so expensive? Gobbled up a lot of the DC stuff for real cheap. And now that floor price floor is starting to come up as that stuff starting to get into the hands of people who want it. Um, here's an example of a, a cheap, again, I think this might've been like a bootleg, but it has, this is an example I think of a bootleg that if you wear it enough has vintage wear to it. So this isn't, I don't think an OG, maybe it is officially licensed product. It might be, let's see the tag here. I think it's just a Delta pro weight. I don't know. This might've been official at the time. This isn't a super old uh, image. You know, this is a, from the last 15 years of Iron Man for sure. Um, but either way, it has vintage wear, and I didn't pay an arm and a leg for this, and it's a pretty big graphic. So you just, it's okay to obviously get things if you don't have to pay a lot. I mean, that goes without saying, but keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out. This was, I didn't pay $300 for this. I paid like 30 bucks for this. Um, and there might be reasons to that. Might be because it's a bootleg. Maybe because it's more recent. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then here, going back to what is safe, though. Like, this is obscure. This is 1994 Mark Schultz, Zeno, Xenozoic Tales. Um, like, this is an obscure comic. Uh, maybe, you know, this, this, the option gets bought into Dana, Hannah Dundee. Maybe the option for this, for a TV series or movie, gets bought up. But even if so, are they redoing this exact illustration and graphic? Probably not. If anything, this is going up. So look for unique things. 
I didn't pay a ton for this either. Look for unique stuff. But then again, the demand's not high, so you're probably not spending as much. So, um, anyways. Now, now if you've watched the end, now if you've watched the end, uh, t write Hannah Dundee in the comments, and I'll know you watched the full video, which uh, kudos to you. All right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.